we'll be discussing regarding the development of the schizophrenia previously we had finished regarding the definition of the introduction of the schizophrenia definition of the schizophrenia incidence and the pre disposing factors so today we'll be discussing regarding development the development of schizophrenia takes place in four phases the first phase is pre morbid phase this pre morbid phase deals with the pre morbid personality of the schizo phoenix the p morbid schizo personality of the schizo phoenix as we learned in the personality disorders especially about schizotypal and schizo uh, schizoid personality disorder we learned that the schizoid personality disorder and schizotypal personality disorder have strong correlation with the development of the schizo phenia so if we see the at characteristic attributes of those two personality disorders they are they are socially there is social maladjustment social leave withdrawn a social withdrawal irritability antagonistic thoughts yeah antagonistic thoughts are behavior so these are the pre morbid characteristics of the persons with the schizophrenia other than these characteristics these are also like they are passive as children they will be passive they will be quiet they will be having poor peer relations and also enjoying solitary activities or they do not in engage in the group activities they like to be engaged in the solitary activities or individual activities they do not like so here also they are passive like passive in the sense they do they do not obey to the commands of the others they will be quiet in the class or quiet everywhere wherever they were quiet at home and they will also have poor peer, poor relation with the other peer groups and also they will be enjoying solitary activities other than that they will be introverted that like we have types of the personality extroverted personality those persons who like to mingle up with each other are who like to share with each other and introverted are the ones who keep who keep to themselves and do not like to mingle with others so these are some of the characteristic features which are present in those individuals who have who develop schizophrenia so this is the pre morbid phase so during the adult life they will show social maladjustment they will show social withdrawal they will show irritability they will show antagonistic thoughts or behavior during the uh, during the child life they will be passive they will be quiet they will have they will show possess poor peer relationships they will be enjoying more solitary activities and they will be introverted also and also anti social behavior during the during their child life they will be showing anti social behavior so these are the characteristic features of the pre morbid phase discussing regarding second phase which is pro dormal phase what is pro dormal phase the pro dormal phase starts are initiates with the development of the signs and symptoms not not specifically the signs and symptoms which uh, which develops in the person are related are 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 those of phase it will be there will be initiation of the signs and symptoms till the till the onset of the frank psychotic symptoms so we can say pro dormal phase is characterized by initiation of acute illness till development of 
फ्रैंक साइकोटिक सिम्टम्स ओके सो दिस इनिशिएशन ऑफ द एक्यूट इलनेस एज आई सैड एज आई सैड सिम्टम्स में भी नॉन स्पेसिफिक आर नॉन स्पेसिफिक सिम्टम्स में भी नॉन स्पेसिफिक एंड दे विल देर विल बी प्रोडॉर्मल फेज इज कैरेक्टराइज बाई इनिशिएशन ऑफ द एक्यूट इलनेस टिल द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द फ्रेंक साइकोटिक सिम्टम्स सो दिस फ्रॉम द इनिशिएशन ऑफ एक्यूट सिम्टम्स टिल फ्रेंक सिम्टम टिल सिम्टम्स ऑफ द फ्रेंक्स साइकोसिस डेवलप इट टेक्स सर्टन टाइम डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द प्री मॉर्बिड एडजस्टमेंट ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल इट माई टेक फ्रॉम सिवरल मंथ टू सिवरल इयर इज द एवरेज लेंथ फ्रॉम प्री प्रो ऑफ द प्रो डॉर्मल फेज इज टू टू फाइव years so in an average person it takes it takes from a, for with it takes an average person two years to go into the third stage which the third stage will be characterized third stage will begin when the frank psychotic symptoms are evident in the person so which is schizophrenic stage third which is schizophrenic stage so we shall discuss regarding the pro dormal uh, uh, we shall discuss regarding the initial signs and symptoms which could be seen in the pro dormal stage those are usually non specific symptoms develop first and then specific symptoms regarding to the schizophrenia come later so non specific symptoms which we see in schizophrenia are sleep disturbances sleep disturbances irritability fatigue poor concentration all these sleep disturbances irritability fatigue poor, poor concentration inattention will lead to social and Will lead to social and role function. So there will be non-specific symptoms. Will be sleep disturbances, irritability, fatigue, poor concentration, inattention, leading to social and functional impairment. That means now the it, the individual will be confined. Individual will be dependent on others. So after these symptoms have fully developed in the person. there is the development of the specific symptoms most mostly positive symptoms of the schizophrenia which are perceptual disturbances perceptual disturbances ideas of reference and suspiciousness are seen first positive symptoms to develop in the schizophrenic person in the prodermal phase so once the non specific symptoms have developed fully there will be initiation of the positive symptoms which will be perceptual disturbances there will be perceptual disturbances we will see later like there is delusion there is hallucinations uh, so sorry ideas of the reference and then suspiciousness also develops late Late in the prodermal stage, the initiation of these symptoms means the development of the active psychosis. Okay, which will be seen, which will be further seen in the third stage, which is schizophrenic stage. So, behavior associated with these, it is important for us to recognize the behavior associated with the prodermal phase. Why? Because if we recognize the behavior at the earliest, we can uh, provide interventions to such clients and better prognosis or better social adjustment of these individuals is. possible because right now we have novel antipsychotics and also there are many uh, uh, therapies which are available for example there is behavioral therapy there are rehabilitation te rehabilitation techniques are there rehabilitation centers are there which help these clients so if the behavior if the behavior associated with this stage is recognized at the earliest we can say there should be better prognosis of such clients next we will move to the third stage which is schizophrenic stage third phase is schizophrenic 
phase. This schizophrenic phase is characterized by the development of the schizophrenic symptoms. Fully onset of the psychotic symptoms. These psychotic symptoms are like Schneider, Schneider's first rank symptoms are there. There are a blue lurus 4 A's. But in general, we will study about positive and negative symptoms of the schizophrenia, which include both blue lurus 4 A's, which also include Schneider's first rank symptoms also. So first we will discuss about the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. First positive, first we will discuss regarding the content of the thought. So in, in the thought process, what is the content of thought, thought what is the content in in the individuals with what is the content in in the schizophrenia so as we know delusion is a thought disorder so we will study in detail regarding the delusion as in our introductory in our first introductory class we had said that delusions are the false beliefs false unshakable beliefs despite the evidence against the belief or other definition we can say regarding the delusion is these these are idiocentric Beliefs are impressions maintained by the pers per person despite the evidence contraindicating the belief. I will say once more, these are idiocentric beliefs are impressions which are maintained by the person despite evidence contraindicating the belief. Or we can also say these are false, uh, these are false beliefs, these are, to say these are false personal beliefs which are inconsistent with the person's intelligence or the cultural background this the uh, evident despite the strong evidence against his beliefs so we can have as many as three definitions regarding the delusions but the meaning never changes meaning is same these are false beliefs despite the evidence against the belief Okay, or we can say simply these are irrational beliefs which are kept by the schizophrenic persons. The delusions can be of many types. Most common ones are paranoid delusion. What is paranoid delusion? In paranoid delusion, the person has extreme suspiciousness about the intentions of the others. For example, if we say paranoid delusion, if we take an example of the paranoid delusion, a person who is suffering from a paranoid delusion thinks that if he will go out, his neighbors might be conspiring against him and they will, they are intending to harm him in some way or in one way or the other. So this person will remain confined to the home despite reassurance given by the uh, family that no neighbor is going to harm you so such beliefs are also such beliefs are most commonly seen in schizophrenic persons next belief if we talk about is delusion of grandeur next is delusion which we talk about is delusion of grandeur city a delusion of grandeur delusion of Delusion of grandeur. Also seen in the manic, manic patient, many persons, this delusion of grandeur, what person has is specific or exaggerated feeling or sense of importance or power or feelings. See what exaggerated sense of power or feelings means or importance means that this person feels I am over important, I am more important than others or I possess some spe specific powers or for example, if we give an example of that, he might say, I am God. Or if I jump from this, if I jump from a window, nothing will happen to me. Or I am capable of changing the inevitable outcomes of any process. So this is delusion of grandeur. Next delusion is delusion of control. Seen in such individuals, delusion of control. What delusion of control is, these persons feel that their behavior or their actions are controlled by some other object or some other person. Okay, so delusion and delusion of control, we have individual feels that his actions or his behavior is controlled by the other object or by other person. Next is somatic delusion or delu delusion of, so sorry, we shall say somatic delusion. Somatic, what in somatic delusion is? 
somatic delusion in somatic delusion individual feels that his in somatic delusion individual has false idea about the functioning of his body for example he might feel that despite being 30 years old he says i am 70 years old despite a lady being not pregnant she says that i am pregnant obviously there is constant reassurance from the healthcare professionals that you are not pregnant and obviously there is reassurance of his body appearance that he is only 30 years old but he still continues to be feel that he is 70 years old next delusion is in the analytic delusion individual feels that part of a body whole whole body or part of a body or external world are non existing what he feels is either his part of the body or whole body or external world are non existent to him for example he might feel that his limbs have in changed in length or his uh, his uh, no changed in length or his some other body part has there he feels that there is there is some inappropriate length or breadth or his any body part has changed in its shape or characteristic okay and despite no, no no such thing has actually occurred that is nihilistic delusion next we have these were some of the common delusions which were were experienced by the schizophrenic patients next we have next negative point sorry positive symptom which is experienced by the persons of schizophrenia is religiosity yeah religiosity there is exaggerated or obsession with the religion what happens in these individuals they will they will be having obsessional thoughts about their religion or they will be having obsessions with the religious rituals they will continue to perform their religious activities or sometimes what happens these individuals move might move to a religious place for example mandir masjid or uh, whatever religious place they they might be whatever religion they might be from and they will be obsessed with the the that religious activity and religious thoughts only next thing which positive symptom is paranoia what is paranoia paranoia is extreme form of the suspiciousness so we will say also we saw in uh, paranoid delusion also we saw but paranoid uh, delusion of paran uh, paranoid um, uh, delusion that is a delusion here also One of one of the symptom which is seen in the schizophrenic. What is paranoia? Paranoia is extreme form of the suspiciousness, which is usually seen schizophrenic. So give if we give an example. For example, if the wife brings food to the schizophrenic, what he says is he refuses the food because he thinks that his wife has poisoned the food. Okay, so this one more now moving on again moving on. Next symptom, positive symptom is. magical think what is magical thinking is if we talk about the onset of the schizophrenia we learned that if the onset of schizophrenia is before the age of the 13 years then we call, we call it as very early onset schizophrenia why i am telling that because magical thinking is most commonly seen in children so more uh, magical thinking will be usually seen in very early onset schizophrenia what is magical thinking is that the person feels that he has control over some situation or he possesses he can change the outcome of any situation so in magical thinking for example the table outcome i can still change the outcome of the situation so that is why it is seen mostly in the children these were all symptom positive symptoms associated with the content of the thought now next we move to the form of the thought how the thoughts are formed in individuals with schizophrenia first symptom is associative associative loosening what is associative loosening is for example if a skill if we talk to a schizophrenic client what he does during his conversation what we will recognize is he shifts from one unrelated topic to next unrelated topic so he will change his focus from one topic to another topic 
that means he will never be able to concentrate on a single thing in hand or he will the conversation with a schizophrenic will never be meaningful or he will not be whatever he will be saying will not be having any meaning why because there is associative loosening again associative loosening is when we are when schizophrenic is mixing two or three unrelated topics together or two or three unrelated communications patterns to, together okay so next will be in the form of thought is neologism what is neologism neologism is when the schizophrenic coins some new terms which actually are do not have any meaning for other persons but they have specific symbolic meaning for the schizophrenic client what is neologism is neologism is when schizophrenic coins some new terms those terms do not have any meaning in general but they possess some specific symbolic rep sp uh, sp symbolic representation for the schizophrenic client for example he will be driving me he, he, he will be giving me a ride in his instead of car he might say in, in his bar war or anything which, which uh, whatever word he might sorry um, word for the car that might depend for if we I so a new word right now but you can understand that you can understand whatever I'm trying to say so next is concrete thinking What is concrete thinking if we remember about the Margaret Malhar's theory of the cognitive development? In second stage, she says, uh, first stage was pre-operation, second was concrete operations. In concrete operations, she says, the child has difficulty in understanding the viewpoint of the other. Similarly, similar things happen with the schizophrenic client. The schizophrenic client has difficulty in understanding the viewpoint of the others. That means he believes whatever he understands regarding the situation, his belief is that this situation is like this, whatever is my understanding, whatever they are telling is not correct. So that is concrete thinking. Next thing is clang association. Next symptom is clang association. Clang association is when the schizophrenic puts the words in the rhythmic form or in a rhythmic form. For example, I am going home, baby is in mother's womb or it is cold, I am bold or so, so on and so on. So, clang association is nothing but where schizophrenics have a habit of putting words in a rhythmic form. Like I said, first example was, I am going home, boy is in, baby is in mother's womb or it is cold, I am bold so on and so on. Circum charity and closely associated with it is tangibility. Circum charity and tangibility is also seen in the schizophrenia. What is circum charity? Circum charity is when a person delays in reaching the point of the communication. By, how, why does he delay? Because he provides useless tedious details which are not actually required. So those tedious details what they do is they delay in reaching the point of the communication or in reaching the end point where we want where actually we wanted our conversation to finish. If you ask him the question, simply if you ask him what is your, uh, where is your home, he might say my home is if you go from here, you take a bus, you go there and then you take next bus, then you take next bus. Instead of simply saying my, my home is at Sopur, he will say take bus, this bus, this bus, that bus and the last he will say Sopur. If we talk about tangibility, in how tangibility differs is in tangibility he never reaches the point of the communication. If we ask the same question to him, where do you live? I live, I take a bus from there, 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 then he just takes the bus. He never reaches home. It will be mutism. Next symptom is mutism. What is mutism? Mutism is when he refuses to talk. Simply when he refuses to talk, when he does not initiate, want to initiate conversation with you, he remain, he kept, 
keeps on he just wants silent he just, he, does, he doesn't want to talk with you as blue let's say in one of his four is is autism in autism is characterized by lost of the lost of the individual into his own world so when he is in his own thoughts when he is in the own world he does not want to initiate in any conversation so next uh, symptom associated with it is dispersivation Persuasion occurs when the individual gives same answers to different questions. If you ask him, how are you? He will say fine. If you ask him, where do you live? He will say fine. If you ask him, have you eaten? He will say fine. When, so basically what it is, when he gives same answers to the different set of the questions. We will be seeing regarding the, these were some of the positive symptoms, sorry, these were some of the disorders of the thought. Now we will see the disorders of the perception. What are the perceptual disturbances that occur in clients with schizophrenia? Perceptual disorders which occur in the schizophrenia, disorder of the perception is hallucination. What is hallucination? And we said it is an idiocentric, it is an uh, idiocentric belief which is not shared by others rega uh, regarding the same situation. Or we can simply say it is the, the false sensory perception not associated with the real external stimulus. The polar sensory perception not associated with real external stimulus. These, sens these sensory perception could be of any senses. For example, olfactory, gastrocytory, uh, tactile, uh, any of the five senses may be involved. And the hallucination will be named accordingly. If they are auditory, auditory hallucination. If they are regarding the, uh, if they are regarding the taste, uh, olfactory. If they are uh, if they are regarding the smell, olfactory. If they are regarding the hear, hearing, auditory. If they are regarding visualization, visual hallucinations. So these are the halluc these are the perceptual dis first perceptual disturbances uh, uh, experienced by schizophrenic person is hallucinations. Next is illusions. What is illusion? Illusion. Illusion is simply misinterpretation of the external misinterpretation of the external stimulus. Now the difference between hallucination no external stimulus. In illusion there is external stimulus but we are misinterpreting the external stimulus. Most common ones which happen with even the all of the all of us is we sometimes if there is inappropriate if the, the light is not enough for us so we might sometimes misin uh, misinterpret we might sometimes have an illusion of a rope for the snake. So these are some of the common uh, perceptual disturbances experienced by the schizophrenic persons. Next is terms which are associated is ecolily. What is ecolily? Ecolily is repetition of the words or repetition of the last few repetition of the sentence or it could be sometimes also the word which are said by the other person. For example, if we if we tell Ask a schizophrenic person, let's go for a walk. He will continue to repeat, go for walk. Or sometimes walk, walk, walk. Or sometimes he might, whole sentence might be re repeated. Let's go for the walk. Or sometimes walk, walk, walk. So, nicoprexia. What is nicoprexia? When he imitates the movements of the others. For others, those movements might be, might be purposeful. But for him, those Movements are purposeless when he is imitating the purposeless movements of the others. Okay. Next, in here are now the next positive so positive reality. Regard related to himself. What he feels is his pa his body part is his body part is unreal, or he feels that his environment is unreal, or he sometimes feels that he is seeing himself from the outside. Okay, so this is regarding depersonalization. Next we have no external stimulus. In illusion there is external stimulus but we are misinterpreting the external stimulus. Most common ones which happen with even the all of the all of us is we sometimes if there is inappropriate if there, the light is not enough 
for us so we might sometimes mis uh, misinterpret we might sometimes have an illusion of a rope for the snake so these are some of the common uh, perceptual disturbances experienced by the schizophrenic persons next is terms which are associated is ecolele what is ecolele ecolele is repetition of the words a repetition of the last few repetition of the sentence or it could be sometimes also the word which are said by the other person for example if we if we ask a schizophrenic person let's go for a walk he will continue to repeat go for walk or sometimes walk 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 or sometimes he might whole sentence might be re repeated let's go for the walk or sometimes walk 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 so nicopraxia What is echopraxia? When he imitates the movements of the others. For others, those movements might be might be purposeful, but for him, those movements are purposeless. When he is imitating the purposeless movements of the others. Okay. Next, in here are now the next positive so positive reality. Regard related to himself. What he feels is his pa his body part is. His body part is unreal, or he feels that his environment is unreal, or he sometimes feels that he is seeing himself from the outside. Okay, so this is regarding depersonalization. Next, we have discussing regarding the negative symptoms of the schizophrenia. First, we will see it with the effect. Effectual disturbances are more. What is effect? Effect is our feeling tune or emotional tune. First is inappropriate effect. When is effect said inappropriate? When our feeling tune is appropriate? When our Feelings or emotions expressed are not congruent with the circumstances, are not congruent with the event. For example, somebody's, if a schizophrenic's mother dies, he keeps, instead of uh, doing grieving, what he does is he simply smiles at that. And he, he, he might laugh sometimes. So, simply inappropriate emotions is when our emotional tone is not congruent with the situation or not congruent with the event itself. Okay, so next in in this will be inappropriate effect. After that, it uh, blunt or flat effect. Flat. What is blunt or flat flat effect? Blunt or flat effect is decreased emotional tune in a person when he when his when he shows very less emotions to any situation. Okay, so blunt or flat. Flat if emotion uh, effect is when the emotional tone of a person is decreased or the emotional possessed by emotions or feeling tone possessed by the person is very low. Next, what is apathy? Apathy is in general decreased interest in the environment or decreased interest in the activities or de decreased interest in anything. Okay, decreased interest to, to do anything, any activity. Volition. Volitions, what volitions has to do is, volitions has to do with our ability to perform goal-directed ability. So, there is volitional impairment in clients with schizophrenia. So, volitional impairment will be, there will be inability to initiate goal-directed activity. So, schizophrenics are, they have, because of their impairment, they are, because of their volitional impairment, they are not able to initiate any goal-directed activity. Next is one of the most common symptoms and more very uh, important negative symptom is emotional ambivalence. What is ambivalence in general? Amb ambivalence is when we possess two kinds of emotions for the same thing. For example, simply love-hate relationship for the same object. If we take an example, for example, if a schizophrenic client wants to have tea, he does a, he's, he, 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 he will be like, if whether I want to have tea or whether I want to have coffee. 
so what what it does is it creates a problem with the decision making now the schizophrenic person will not be able to decide whether to have tea or whether to have coffee so there will be indecision what will happen is it will relate to it will it will lead to the problems in decision making so this prob this uh, decision making same about the relationships whether to talk with the person or whether i like the person or whether i hate with the person so that will reflect whether i want to talk with the person or whether i want to keep myself isolated from the person whether i want to be sociable or whether i don't want whether i want to be or i want to be isolated so these emotional ambivalence will have major problems in the relationship formation because of his love hate relationship for all the objects whether it is his family whether it is what he wants to drink what what he wants to eat and in all the aspects of his life emotional ambivalence take creates a problem for mainly in the relationship development this we have impaired social interactions after ambivalence we see about the relationships and social interactions there is impaired social interactions social interactions okay in persons with the schizophrenia because of ambivalence as i explained earlier because of ambivalence and because of their pre morbid personality where they had social mal adjustment where they were socially withdrawn they do not like to be sociable what they do is they choose isolation over socialization okay so there will be impairment in their social interactions also in the way they talk to others sometimes what they do if they talk to others they might intrude their personal spaces or sometimes they simply don't like to talk with the others isolation next negative symptom is socio social isolation because of all these factors and because of the inner desire to be socially isolated as i said they, they as children they they more like they usually like solitary activities those activities which could be performed alone so all these factors in contribute to the social isolation so people with schizophrenia they live socially isolated life if we see psychomotor symptoms what kind of psychomotor symptoms are associated with the uh, associated in the schizophrenia is first is psychomotor behavior or you can say psychomotor symptoms simply in energia or e energia in energia is la generally lack of the energy to perform any activity what schizophrenics have they have the inner the, uh, they, their inner energy is lacking they do not have the sufficient they, they never feel that they have the sufficient energy to perform any activity next is vexy flexibility what vexy flexibility means is for example if we in vexy flexibility if a uh, schizophrenic who is having the who is showing the signs of vexy flexibility what he will do is if a nurse or a doctor comes to check his blood pressure and then his arm was obviously in a straight Line is uh, in a straight alignment, and it was in a particular away from the bed. After removing the cuff, also he will keep the arm in the same fashion. Or for example, sometimes if you if uh, you ask him to lift his leg, even after you have finished your examination, what he will do is he will continue to lift his leg despite the discomfort. Despite the position causing him discomfort, he won't mind the discomfort, but he will continue to keep on the leg. Sometimes what he does is. he he keeps his head slightly away uh, uh, slightly 2 or 3 inches so 2 uh, or 3 inches 3 uh, inches up from the bed i or if he is asked so to get up uh, get up from the bed slightly keep up from the bed so he will continue to keep up from the bed that position is called as psychological pillow when he does that he keeps himself 2 or 3 inches uh, 
up from the bed so we call this as psychological pillow the patient feels that if there is some sort of the pillow in back in behind his head so he doesn't need to lean backwards so he continues to lean upwards so these were some of the characteristic attributes related to the maxi flexibility next symptom seen in see next symptoms will be related to the positions it will be Sorry, not regarding the position, it's regarding the posture. Posture of the schizophrenic client. The, schizo the posture which will be maintained by the schizophrenic will be bizarre. He will, he will keep on maintaining some bizarre positions. He will keep on maintaining, showing some bizarre movements of his body. Sometimes what he will do, he will randomly, he will make certain movements of the body. In, sh in, in short, he will, whatever the, the com uncomfortable moments will be very or un uncomfortable or bizarre moments will be very common in persons with the schizophrenia and there will be also pacing and rolling of the pacing and rocking so what he will do he will lean forward and then lean backward and sometimes he moves his body from down up and goes forward and then goes backwards so these are pacing and rolling movement is performed by the schizophrenic persons and other general uh, other attributing factor other attributing uh, symptoms are in hedonia anhedonia is inability to inability to have pleasure in the usually pleasurable activities those activities which give pleasure to the common people they do not give pleasure to the schizophrenic person so when schizophrenic no person no longer feels pleasure in such such activities which he used to feel pleasure in the condition is called as n okay so these were some of the positive and negative symptoms associated with the schizophrenia other than these positive and negative symptoms we have four uh, A's of the bluler which are associated with loose, loosening uh, there is ambivalence which we discussed it uh, associated with loosening is also being discussed it there is also autism what autism is autism is lost of lo lost into his own world when it is usually seen in the children it is an autistic disorder which is seen in the children's the characteristic feature of that disorder is the person gets lost in his own world and the world of his own fantasy creation so that means the person will no longer be interested in communication or interaction with the others there is also there are Schneider's first rank symptoms like there is hallucination hallucinatory voices in the form of running commentary there is uh, there, there is uh, Halluciner uh, halluc command hallucinations are uh, described by those are all have been discussed in here if something has not been discussed that is an assignment for you guys you guys look up for the Schneider's first rank symptoms nothing to explain there they are just for you to remember so nothing more to be there other than this we talked about the suicide ideation which I finished in our incidents uh, in the introductory class suicide Suicide is other uh, major factor which is common in such schizophrenics. We said that there one to three, so, sorry, every one third of the people suffering from the schizophrenia commit suicide and uh, one in ten die from the suicide and suicide ideation ranges from uh, 50 to 55 percent and then attempts of the suicide are made, 20 to 50 percent of them make the attempts to the suicide. So this must be these are some the symptoms associated with the schizophrenia developmental this was the third developmental stage which was schizophrenic stage schizophrenic phase now we have last phase is residual phase
what is residual phase residual phase follows the active uh, active process active phase of the uh, sorry residual phase follows the active the active phase of the illness and uh, the symptoms may, might be pro, uh, might not be present or they might not be prominent although the negative symptoms will continue to exist in most of the persons the negative symptoms will continue to exist and the residual impairment is increases after the active phases of the psychosis okay so this was regarding the development of the schizophrenia next we have is treatment of the schizophrenia that will be antipsychotics we will be discussing in the next lecture and also some of the behavioral therapies which are used in uh, rehabilitation techniques which are used in psychosis we will mo mostly deal with uh, antipsychotics Thank you very much.